In quarries, I could see its strata, the dragon's veins and muscles, the minerals, its teeth and bone. I could touch the stones the old woman wore, its bone marrow. I had worked the soil, which is its flesh, and harvested the plants and climbed the trees, which are its hairs. I could listen to its voice in the thunder and feel its breathing in the winds, see its breathing in the clouds. Its tongue is the lightning, and the red that the lightning gives to the world is strong and lucky. In blood, poppies, roses, rubies, the red feathers of birds, the red carp, the cherry tree, the peony, the line alongside the turtle's eyes, and the mallards. In the spring when the dragon awakes, I watched its turnings in the rivers. The closest I came to seeing a dragon whole was when the old people cut away a small strip of bark on a pine that was over 3,000 years old. The reason underneath flows in the swirling shapes of dragons. If you should decide during your old age that you would like to live another 500 years, come here and drink 10 pounds of this sap, they told me. But don't do it now. You're too young to decide to live forever. The old people sent me out into thunderstorms to pick the red cloud herb, which grows only then, a product of dragon's fire and dragon's rain. I brought the leaves to the old man and old woman, and they ate them for immortality. I learned to make my mind large, as the universe is large, so that there is room for paradoxes. Pearls are bone marrow. Pearls come from oysters. The dragon lives in the sky, ocean, marshes, and mountains, and the mountains are also its cranium. Its voice thunders and jingles like copper pans. It breathes fire and water, and sometimes the dragon is one, sometimes many. I worked every day. When it rained, I exercised in the downpour, grateful not to be pulling sweet potatoes. I moved like the trees in the wind. I was grateful not to be squishing in chicken mud, which I did not have nightmares about so frequently now. On New Year's mornings, the old man let me look in his water gourd to see my family. They were eating the biggest meal of the year, and I missed them very much. I had felt ver very loved, love pouring from their fingers when the adults tucked red money in our pockets. My two old people did not give me money, but each year for fifteen years, a bead. After I unwrapped the red paper and rolled the bead about between thumb and fingers, they took it back for safekeeping. We ate monk's food as usual. By looking into the water guard, I was able to follow the men I would have to execute. Not knowing that I watched, fat men ate meat. Fat men drank wine made from the rice. Fat men sat on naked little girls. I watched powerful men count their money, and starving men count theirs. When bandits brought their share of raids home, I waited until they took off their masks so I would know the villagers who stole from their neighbors. I studied the generals' faces, their rank stalks quivering at the backs of their heads. I learned rebels' faces, too, their foreheads tied with wild oaths. The old man pointed out strengths and weaknesses whenever heroes met in classical battles. But warfare makes a scramble of the beautiful, slow old fights. I saw one young fighter salute his opponent, and five peasants hit him from behind with scythes and hammers. His opponent did not warn him. Cheaters! I yelled. How am I going to win against cheaters? Don't worry, the old man said. You'll never be trapped like that poor amateur. You can see behind you like a bat. Hold the peasants back with one hand and kill the warrior with the other. Menstrual days did not interrupt my training. I was as strong as on any other day. You're now an adult, explained the old woman on the first one, which happened halfway through my stay on the mountain. You can have children. 
had thought I had cut myself when jumping over my swords, one made of steel and the other carved out of a single block of jade. However, she added, we are asking you to put off children for a few more years. Then can I use the control you taught me and stop this bleeding? No, you don't stop shitting and pissing, she said. It's the same with the blood. Let it run. Let it walk in Chinese. To console me for being without family on this day, they let me look inside the gourd. My whole family was visiting friends on the other side of the river. Everybody had on good clothes and was exchanging cakes. It was a wedding. My mother was talking to the hosts. Thank you for taking our daughter. Wherever she is, she must be happy now. She will certainly come back if she is alive, and if she is a spirit, you have given her a descent line. We are so grateful. Yes, I would be happy. How full I would be with all their love for me. I would have for a new husband, my own playmate, dear since childhood, who loved me so much he was to become a spirit bridegroom for my sake. We will be so happy when I come back to the valley, healthy and strong, and not a ghost. The water gave me a close-up of my husband's wonderful face, and I was watching when it went white at the sudden approach of armored men on horseback, thudding and jangling. My people grabbed iron skillets, boiling soup, knives, hammers, scissors, whatever weapons came to hand, but my father said, There are too many of them and they put down the weapons and waited quietly at the door, open as if for guests. An army of horsemen stopped at our house. The foot soldiers in the distance were coming closer. A horseman with silver scales, a fire in the sun, shouted from the scroll in his hands, his words opening a red gap in his black beard. Your baron has pledged fifty men from this district, one from each family, he said, and then named the family names. No! I screamed into the gourd. I'll go, my new husband and my youngest brothers said to their fathers. No, my father said, I myself will go. But the women held him back until the foot soldiers passed by, my husband and my brother leaving with them. As if disturbed by the marching feet, the water churned, and when it stilled again, Wait! I yelled, Wait! There were strangers. The Baron and his family, all of his family, were knocking their heads on the floor in front of their ancestors and thanking the gods out loud for protecting them from conscription. I watched the Baron's piggish face chew open mouth on the sacrificial pig. I plunged my hand into the gourd, making a grab for his thick throat, and he broke into pieces, splashing water all over my face and clothes. I turned the gourd upside down to empty it, but no little people came tumbling out. Why can't I go down there now and help them? I cried. I'll run away with the two boys and we'll hide in the caves. No, the old man said. You're not ready. You're only fourteen years old. You get hurt for nothing. Wait until you are twenty-two, the old woman said. You'll be, a bi you'll be big then and more skillful. No army will be able to stop you from doing whatever you want. If you go now, you will be killed, and you'll have wasted seven and a half years of our time. You will deprive your people of a champion. I'm good enough now to save the boys, 